Hello and welcome to the MapMagic 2 tutorials. With this video we'll start the series of the tutorials that will guide you through all of the most used features. Unlike the MapMagic 1 that had a single video guiding from zero to a complete scene, I will split these videos into subjects, the ways to do this or that or the tutorials describing some generator's work. So, this video is devoted to the ways MapMagic could be created, graph window opened and navigated and generators changed. At first it may seem a bit overwhelming, but do not try to memorize each step I take now. It's more of the introductionary video, just to show you the MapMagic interface. I will use all that stuff over and over in the next tutorials, so you will have plenty of chances to learn how this or that could be done. Now let's get to action. First, I will create a graph asset. This file will hold the nodes, the properties, linkage, all the data that determines the terrain creation logic. Create MapMagic. Here I can choose between the empty graph and a template with three nodes, which seems to be a better choice for this tutorial. To create a MapMagic object itself, I've got to drag and drop the created graph to the scene. Here you can see the MapMagic object appeared and it already got one tile pinned. Alternatively, you can create MapMagic in a legacy way. Game object, 3D object, MapMagic. Here you can either to create a new graph or select already existing one. All in all you get the same object with a first pinned tile. This generate button forces all of the graph to regenerate. Generate changed will generate only the changed nodes. By the default they are generated once the change is done. It's called instant generate. It could be turned off then pressing this button will make a sense. You can pin the additional tiles by checking pin new tile button and selecting a tile in a scene view. You can drag and drop the selection frame to pin multiple tiles at once. To exit the pin mode just press the pin button again. Checking pin as a draft will pin low resolution terrain version called draft. It's generating way faster, almost instantly, and has a lower number of faces, so it's rendered faster too. You can see the drafts appearing when the main terrain is being generated. It gives the preview of how the terrain will look, which could be quite handy. If you are creating a vast landscape, it could be convenient to pin a relatively big area of the draft terrains and pin one or two detailed terrains for a closer look. You can see the blue lines around the tiles that display the tile grid. Full resolution terrains are shown with the solid lines, while drafts are used in the dotted lines. These frames are only visible when MapMagic object is selected. If you don't want to be distracted, deselect it. You will be still able to edit your graph and apply changes made with it. For now I will leave only the one terrain pinned and clean everything with the unpinned checkbox. By the default MapMagic generates the infinite terrains in a play mode, creating new tiles on the go. At first terrains are displayed as drafts, generating in the background. Far terrains do not switch to the main tiles for the performance reasons. All of the play mode generator ranges could be set in the infinite terrain menu, as well as the generate anchors. It could be not only the main camera, but the characters, network players or other objects with a specific tag. Now let's proceed to the part of what MapMagic is about, the graph. You can open up the graph window by pressing the open button of the MapMagic object or by selecting the graph asset by clicking open in the inspector or just by double clicking the graph. I will dock the window here for the convenience. Let me arrange the layout a bit. You can scroll the graph by dragging it with the middle mouse button or alternatively with an alt and left button drag. You can zoom in or zoom out with the mouse wheel. Or you can press this button to zoom in or out quickly. If you have lost your graph somewhere, you can click the focus button to center on it. Here you can see three template nodes. The first one, the noise, is the initial node that generates the noise map from scratch. 
The node in the center is the erosion. It takes the noise map into its input, processes it and outputs the processed map into the node output. This kind of nodes are called modifiers. Note that the initial nodes do not have any input connector. The last node applies the modified map to the terrain. These nodes are called outputs. Here is the height output that assigns the input map as the terrain height. Each of the nodes could be moved by dragging its name or other part of its window that is free from any controls. Changing each of the node variables will make the terrain to regenerate, applying the changed values. You can change the values by dragging the label next to the value field. To create the node, you can drag the Add icon to the place where the new node should be placed and select the node type from the menu. To remove the node, you can drag and drop it to the place where the Add button is. Now it becomes the Remove button. Alternatively, you can create the node with the right click and then select Add menu. You can note that all of the generators are sorted into three big sections depending on their output type. These are Map, Objects and Splines. Inside each of the sections you can see the division into the initial nodes that do not have inputs, the modifiers and the output which apply the generated results to the terrain. There are some other node groups too that will be mentioned in the other tutorials. To link the nodes Drag one of the node's output to the other node's input. Dragging the input to the other node's output will work too. Note that each of the node's outputs can have several links, while input could be linked to the one output only. So, to unlink the generator, drag its input to any empty place. Take a note on some of the convenient tricks. By dragging the add icon to the link between the nodes, it will get a link color frame. Dropping it here will create a modifier node of the link type and will connect it with the both generators. Dragging the add icon to the node itself will create the node of your choice of the same type and will link it with the node when possible. Adding via the right click works the same. Clicking near the link will insert the modifier node and you can see it's written insert next to add. And clicking on the node will try to append the node branch. You can see it's called append. MapMagic has a special tool for grouping nodes together, organizing the graph and leaving short comments. It is the group node. You can name the group, thus commenting this block, as well as you can set its color to make it more noticeable. You can drag the group by clicking anywhere within it, and all of the nodes that are inside will be moved with it. To remove the node from the group, simply drag it away. To add, drag it so it's entirely within the group borders. Or you can extend the group borders so it will include the node. On group remove you will be asked whether you are going to remove the group nodes as well. There's the other tool for working with multiple nodes. Multi-selection. Generally, there's no need to select nodes in MapMagic, since each generator has its interface and preview expanded. This way you can think of it like of always selected. However, it might be handy to move or delete several nodes at once. You can select nodes by shift-clicking on them. Dragging with the shift and left mouse will create the selection frame. Now the selected nodes are moved as one. Well, you can still move the other nodes too. This selection is temporary, not saved with the graph, and could be removed just by clicking node value or anywhere in the graph. Note that the selected nodes are removed together too. One of the notable features MapMagic 2 brings is a node preview. The effect of each node could be shown right in the graph. To see the preview, 
click the chevron icon at the bottom of the node. This button will apply the preview to the terrain. Now you can see it's highlighted. To remove the preview from the terrain, press the highlighted button again. The neighboring button will open up the preview window, where you can examine it in detail. This toggle will switch between the heat map and grayscale. Don't confuse the heat map with the height map or elevation like the one used on the world maps. The red color here means the low values, while the green means high. By the default, the preview is taken from the closest style, but you can manually assign the terrain to preview. To do so, use the Select Preview button of the MapMagic object. For now, it's all for the Quick Start tutorial. I hope you are not overwhelmed with all the interface stuff. As I already mentioned, the main purpose of this tutorial is make you not to be frightened when the group will appear or the preview will be opened in further tutorials. So, I'd like to recommend you proceeding to the next video, where we'll create and paint a primitive but yet finished and playable landscape. You can revisit this tutorial after you will become a confident magic user, just to refresh your memories and learn some tricks you've missed. So, feel free to get familiar with that map magic and go on to the next tutorial once you are ready. Thanks for watching. Bye.